Hello, welcome to Analog Communication Lab. Uh, today we are going to perform amplitude modulation. First, let's understand what is modulation. In modulation, we multiply the basic information with very high frequency carrier. And by doing so, we push the spectrum of a signal to very high frequency. Now, there are a couple of reasons that we do modulation. Number one, to make the antenna size practical. The principle of antenna is, if you want efficient radiation, the antenna length must be lambda by two. Higher the frequency, lower the lambda. So if you change this uh, spectrum to very high frequency, the lambda becomes shorter and the antenna length becomes practical. The second reason that we do modulation is multiplexing. If we want to transmit more than one signal through the same channel without any interference, then what we do is we shift each signal to different spectrum at much higher frequency without any overlapping. And now you can transmit and receive more than one signals through the same channel without interference. The third reason that we do modulation is the exchange between SNR and the bandwidth. There are different kinds of modulation, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. This practical is all about amplitude modulation in which the information signal changes the amplitude of the carrier. In other words, the amplitude of the carrier changes in proportional to the information signal. So amplitude modulation practical uh, will perform using this uh, Sigma trainer kit. So this is the trainer which is basically from Sigma. It's amplitude modulation model COM 101. There are various sections on the trainer. This one is a power supply section which basically converts AC into DC and the DC signal uh, is fed to various circuits on the board. This particular section is audio generator. It will generate frequencies from 300 Hertz to 3.4 kilohertz. On the top of that, there is audio amplifier. We can connect external signal here. It will amplify. This particular section is a modulator. It is written here, balanced modulator. So this is the section that will do the modulation. Now we need two signals for modulation. One is the information signal, another one is the carrier. So we need to generate the carrier. For that, this is a circuit, which is basically RF oscillator. It generates carrier, very high frequency, and you can change the frequency here, starting with 100 kilohertz. Once we do this modulation, the signal that is available here, modulated signal, that will be transmitted. And the receiver receives this signal, of course, through the antenna, and then demodulates. Here on the trainer, we have a demodulator that is uh, this particular section, which is a diode detector. Another name for that is peak detector. The demodulated signal here will be connected to this low pass filter and the output of the low pass filter here can be connected to either CRO or this is a audio amplifier where the signal is amplified and then we can connect the speakers at these particular points. This is a speaker. So this is how we'll perform the practical. There are other sections, but those other sections will be used for DSP modulation. 
So let's start connecting the audio amplif uh, audio input. So this is where we take the output from audio generator. So this audio is connected to one of the modulation input. The RF carrier is internally connected. This is where the RF carrier is generated and if you see this line, it is already internally connected. Right. So we are ready to observe the waveform at the output of modulator. So we'll be using this uh, CRO. First, let's see what kind of signal that is coming out of the audio generator. So if I connect channel one over here, so this is a probe, and this probe is connected to channel 1. You can see it's a sine wave. Using the trigger control of the CRO, we'll try to stabilize this. So this is a sine wave, which is basically information signal. On the kit, there are controls to increase the amplitude of the sine wave. You can see the amplitude is increasing. And this is the control to change the frequency. You can see the frequency is increasing. Now, the modulation is already happening. This is a modulator. So if you use the channel 2, this is the second channel and if you connect the probe at the output of the modulator, we will be, we'll be able to see the modulator signal. So this is where the AM modulator output is. Okay. Now there is one trick. There are two terminals given here, if you can see these two terminals. If you just short these two terminals, it will give you amplitude modulation. And, and if you keep these terminals open, it will give you DSD, suppressed carrier modulation. So let's uh, short these two first. So by connecting a wire here, I am basically shorting those two terminals. Now the modulation that is happening is amplitude modulation with carrier and I have connected a probe here. So the probe is connected to the second channel and now if you see on the CRO screen, that's a modulator signal. Let's use this trigger to stabilize this. So you can see this modulation happening. On the top is the information signal. On the bottom is the AM modulated signal. Now there is something like modulation index. If the information signal amplitude is too much, it will happen something like this. You see the uh, small loops coming up in between? Somewhere here, yeah, those, those small things. So this is over modulation. We don't want this to happen. Modulation index right now is more than one. So by reducing the amplitude of the input signal here if you just reduce this you will notice that those small loops will disappear and something like this so this is a perfect modulation 
the modulation index less than 1. So basically, yes, right here, that is the limit. This is modulation index 1. It should not cross. This is not required. This is not expected. It will cause distortion at the receiver. So what we want to keep is something like this. Yeah. Modulation index 1 or this is even better. Modulation index less than 1. So this is a perfect amplitude modulation signal. Now we have already done the modulation. Next step is to connect the modulated signal to diode detector. So I am connecting a wire here. So basically this is the signal, the signal coming out of this wire in the practical application will be connected to the antenna. So if you connect an antenna here, the signal will be radiated into the free space in all direction if it is a dipole and the receiver will receive it. Just for the demonstration, we are not going to use the uh, antenna here, but we will connect this modulated signal to something called diode detector input. So if you see here, there is AM modulator input. So that is where I will connect the modulated signal. Now this is a diode detector. It will demodulate the signal and if we want to observe the demodulated signal we need to connect the output to the probe number 2. So this is the output of a diode detector and that is where I will connect probe number 2. So on the screen let me put a modulated signal to channel number 1 and then demodulate it to channel number 2. So here, yes. this is modulated signal on channel number 1 and here demodulated signal on channel number 2. So on the CRO, you can see the modulated signal on the top and the demodulated signal on the bottom. The demodulated signal consists of the original signal. At the same time, there are other frequencies also. So we need a low pass filter to filter out other frequencies. In that case, we need to connect demodulated output to a low pass filter. So I will just uh, take this probe out. This is the output of demodulator that I will connect to something called low pass filter. So this is a low pass filter and to the input of low pass filter, yes, right here, I'll connect. So now the signal is fed to the low pass filter and if you monitor the output of the low pass filter, it should be a perfect sine wave. So this is the output where I'm connecting my channel 2. So if you see on the CRO, the signal is perfectly demodulated as well as low pass filter and you get your original sine wave back. We can do something else. Uh, we can connect this demodulated signal to a speaker and listen what kind of uh, 
sound it gives you. So I'm taking uh, another wire and connecting the output Yes, sorry here, yeah. This is the output and I'm connecting that to audio amplifier. This is audio amplifier and to the input of audio amplifier. And I have connected output to the speaker. This is a speaker. And you can hear the monotone. I have reduced the input amplitude to zero, you don't hear anything. But as I increase the amplitude of the input signal at the uh, modulator, you will hear the output of the speaker, the volume going from very low, uh, low to very high. Also observe the effect on the waveform on, on the scope. If I change the frequency of the input signal, if I change the frequency of the input sine wave, then also the sound of the demodulated signal from the speaker, it will change. So I want you to notice as frequency increases, how the sound changes. Great. So let me just disconnect the speakers just to keep that whistling sound out of our practical. Okay. Uh, and let's do something different. What I mean is instead of connecting the sine wave here, I will use a microphone and the output of the microphone we have connected here, which is a audio amplifier. And I will connect the output of audio amplifier to our modulator. Earlier we had connected the output of uh, audio frequency generator, but now we'll be using microphone. We'll speak into the microphone. So I'm connecting this uh, output of uh, audio amplifier and I'll take the microphone I'm tapping on this and you can see the modulated signal on the scope now I'm speaking something in the microphone and you can see the variation so now my voice is actually modulating the RF carrier and you can see the amplitude of the upper waveform changes same way as I am speaking. Let me speak louder. Hello, one, two, three, four, check, 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 mic testing, one, two, three, four. So you can see the amplitude changes. Let me change the time base of the CRO so you can see these uh, amplitude variations clearly. Hello, one, two, hello, check, check, hello. Hello, one, two, you see? Now you can see the variations very clearly. As I'm speaking in the microphone, you can see the variations of the modulated signal 
Hello, one, two, three, four, check, check. Now, what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, connect. The setup is same. I will connect my speaker back. And whatever I'm going to speak in the microphone, it will be reproduced at the output of the speaker. Hello, hello. I'll increase the gain of the output section. So right now I'm tapping on the microphone and you can hear the tapping sound coming out of the speaker. Let me go closer to the speaker. If I speak something, hello, this will be reproduced at the speaker output. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two, three, four, check, check. One, two, three, four, one, two. Let's check how the modulator signal changes. So I'll go to the CRO. Hello. One, two, three, four, check, check, one, hello, one, two, hello, check, one, two. So, this is about uh, amplitude modulation. As a student, we need to do different things. So, try different things. Uh, for example, do the over modulation and see what is the effect at the output. So I will now connect uh, in the input the audio So right now, if you see the input signal amplitude is zero, there is no modulation. What you see is only the carrier. I will increase the input amplitude. Gradually, the modulation index increases. It will reach to one, and it will become more than one. And you can notice the change in the sound of the speaker. Because, you know, as modulation index becomes more than one, the detector doesn't work properly. Uh, the detector doesn't work properly, and the output is uh, distorted. So instead of a uh, monotone, you will listen multitones. So let's start. Another way to look at the distortion is just focus on the bottom waveform which is the demodulated and the filter signal. As the modulation in, uh, index uh, becomes more than one, the demodulated and the filtered signal is no longer a sine wave, it's a distorted sine wave. Let's see one more time. I have removed the speaker, but you can see here, as the modulation index is more than one, the bottom waveform, which is the demodulated and the filtered one, is no longer a sine wave. Even though the input is a sine wave, the output we are getting more than one sine wave. This is distortion. And this distortion happens because we have over modulation. And the peak detector will detect uh, along with the original sine wave, some other signals also. So we don't want this to happen, as I said uh, initially. Yeah, this is the modulation index 1, less than 1. Perfect. 
you see the demodulated signal is a sine wave. So this is the all about amplitude modulation and as I said try different things like in this practical instead of a sine wave at the input we connected a microphone we also tried uh, over modulation and see what happens so there are many things which you can try as a student and just convince your, yourself how this AM amplitude modulation works in the next practical we'll talk about DSBSC that is double sideband suppressed carrier modulation I hope you enjoy hello welcome to the next practical that is a double sideband in the first practical that was amplitude modulation what we observe that the output signal that is a modulated signal does contain carrier however the carrier doesn't contain any information another drawback is the carrier consumes a lot of power so people thought that what if we suppress the carrier and that gives rise to another modulation scheme which is double sideband suppressed carrier DSBSC. So we will observe how the DSB works using the trainer kit modulation as well as demodulation. We will use the same kit as we use for amplitude modulation. The only difference is these two points that we had connected We'll remove this wire. We'll keep these two points open. Now the modulator works as a DSB, double sideband. Connecting these two points inserts the carrier into modulator signal. By not connecting these two points, we get DSB. The output is not having carrier but just a modulator carrier. So continuing with this uh, sine wave is con connected as an input to the modulator. The output here is a double sideband modulation. Let's see how it looks. So I'm connecting a probe here. I'm also connecting a, a channel 1 at the sine wave generator. So what you see on the CRO is a DSB modulation. It's different. It's different than amplitude modulation. On the top what you see is a sine wave which is a modulating signal. On the bottom what you see is a DSB double side bend. If I increase the input amplitude you will see the modulated signal also the amplitude increases. So this is basically double sideband. It is different than amplitude modulation because in DSB the carrier doesn't exist. The standalone carrier doesn't exist but it's a modulated carrier. Now we can't use the peak detector for demodulation of DSB. There is something called product detector. So here on the upper right corner there is a circuit called product detector. This is a product detector. So I will connect here this is my DSB modulated signal. As I said earlier uh, in the actual application this point will be connected to the antenna and the signal is radiated and they received but just for the demonstration we don't use antenna but we connect the modulator signal to demodulator input so this is a product detector one of the input here is the modulator signal there. so I am just connecting this as the name suggests is a product detector it basically multiplies modulated signal with RF carrier. So on the bottom you see RF input. So we need to connect the carrier at this point. So we'll 
go to the carrier circuits this is rf oscillator carrier, carrier circuit carrier generation we'll use this rf output point and take this output and connect the product detector input so now at this point which is a detector output we should observe what kind of signal that is so here i'm connecting a probe and if i go to the screen what you see is modulated signal on the top and the demodulated signal on the bottom just to clean the output signal we can connect this output to low pass filter so i'm, I'm taking another wire here I just take the output here connect that to the low pass filter input so you can see this wire i have taken out from the product detector and connected that to low pass filter input and if i monitor the output with the low pass filter it's a much cleaner demodulated signal on the top it's modulated dsb modulated on the bottom demodulated similar to what we did in am we can always connect the signal at this point to the speaker and just listen what kind of sound it gives so i'm connecting the output of the low pass filter to the speakers and you can connect the speakers here there is no sound because the input signal the modulating signal amplitude is zero as i increase the input amplitude you will uh, find out the increase in the volume at the output and i'll also change the frequency of the input signal and see how the sound changes at the output of the speaker So uh, let me remove the speakers to get rid of some noise here okay now we are fine Let's do something different instead of uh, the input sine wave let's connect uh, this microphone so microphone is connected to this uh, audio amplifier and the output of the amplifier I'll use as an input to the modulator and then i'll speak in the microphone hello and you can see on the scope as i speak in the microphone the modulated signal changes hello 1 2 let me change the time base so you can feel it hello 1 2 hello hello check 1 2 hello hello 1 2 3 4 
mic testing hello hello one two three four check check one two you can see the change in the modulator signal and also the demodulator signal one two hello one two three four mic testing hello hello one two i'm not a good singer but you can sing a song and see what are the variations on the modulator signal as well as demodulator signal so this is all about uh, double sideband modulation next we'll study single sideband that is ssb so we did uh, amplitude modulation with carrier uh, we also did uh, double sideband modulation suppressed carrier now we are going to see single sideband modulation ssb the advantage of amplitude modulation with carrier is it contains a carrier which is used at the receiver for demodulation and the receiver becomes extremely simple it just requires one diode and rc circuit for demodulation so receiver becomes very simple so for broadcasting and the commercial use am is one of the favorites and all all around the world people were using am before the invention of fm the disadvantage of am is it contains carrier which consumes a lot of power even though the carrier doesn't contain any information so people got rid of uh, carrier and got dsb the dsb contains two sidebands upper sideband as well as lower sideband and both carries information so people thought that why there is there is a redundancy can we not suppress one of the sideband so that we conserve the bandwidth so that is why uh, the new scheme came up which is ssb single sideband in which we generate dsb suppress carrier there are two sidebands then we use some kind of filter at the transmitter and we suppress one of the sidebands and the transmit only one sideband now the bandwidth required is one half that of dsb or am so which is the advantage the only demerit is the receiver becomes complex the transmitter also becomes little bit complex because we we have to use one bandpass filter to remove one of the bands however the advantage of uh, less bandwidth that is important so now we are going to study how the ssb signal is generated and demodulated we use the same kit which is uh, of am and dsb there is a balance modulator here this is a balance modulator we'll connect modulating signal at this point rf carrier is connected here the balance modulator this is the ic which does the modulation which is nothing but a multiplier so which multiplies sine wave here with which is a modulating signal multiplies modulating signal with rf carrier at the output which is this point we get double sideband before we radiate the signal through the antenna we need to suppress one of the sidebands because we want ssb single sideband modulation so the output of the modulator will be connected to a bandpass filter so we have something here you can see this is a bandpass filter the center frequency of this bandpass filter is 455 kilohertz meaning that the carrier that we are going to use must be at 455 kilohertz then and then this bandpass filter can filter one of the side bands and we get the ssb to get carry frequency exactly 455 kilohertz there is this frequency knob 
we can change this uh, frequency and make sure that it is 455 kilohertz right now you can see it can vary from 100 kilohertz to 1 megahertz this is the carrier generating circuit so if the position of this knob is such that the carrier that is generated at 455 kilohertz then only the bandpass filter here can remove one of the side bands and everything works so now let me explain the whole circuit starting from the beginning this is our audio frequency generator so we connect the output of this audio frequency generator through this cable to one of the input of modulator another input is already internally connected which is a carrier this is a IC which does the modulation this is a point will get the DSB signal right now this wire you can see this wire the output from this is connected as an input to the bandpass filter yes this is a bandpass filter if the carrier frequency is really 455 kilohertz then the input to this signal sorry the input to this circuit at this point actually uh, let's just interchange this yes I have connected output of the modulator to the input of the filter and the output of the filter this black wire yeah this is the output so that I have connected to demodulator so this I am holding one wire which is connecting the bandpass filter output to demodulator so let me remove this so what I am holding right now what I am holding is the output of modulator at this point we are getting SSB signal in the practical application this point will be connected of course through the power amplifier to antenna and the signal is radiated and received just for demonstration we are not using antenna and will connect this signal to demodulator the demodulator is same as that is used in DSP so it's a product detector again at the product detector we need a carrier to multiply the received signal so the red wire is bringing the carrier and the black wire that is bringing in the SSB signal the IC that you see this is IC is again doing the multiplication of this two and then we get the SSB signal as an output so this is the output which I have connected if you see this to the input of low pass filter an output of the low pass filter will monitor on scope right now I have set the frequency node of the carrier such that it really gives me 455 kilohertz signal which is a requirement of this particular kit in the practice the carrier frequency could be anything but just to make sure that uh, this works I have set this to 455 kilohertz so if we go back to the CRO
on the top what you are observing is dsb signal this is before the filtering and the bottom what you see is a demodulated signal which is a perfect sine wave same as what we connected in the input we are we are observing the dsb signal because i have connected the probe at the dsb output if i connect at the output of filter then it will be a dsb signal sorry ssb signal if you connect at the output of uh, filter you will get the ssb signal how would you make sure that you are really getting the output signal which was the input at the modulator the bottom one is the demodulator signal so on the kit there are controls for the sine wave generator which is uh, the amplitude and the frequency so we will change the amplitude and see what is the effect on the demodulator signal we will also change the frequency and see the effect so i'm changing the amplitude and you can see the amplitude of demodulated signal also changes i am changing the frequency and reducing the frequency now i am increasing the frequency and you can see that the frequency changes so this is a verification that the output of the kit is really what was connected at the modulator input again just to do something different you can connect the microphone speak into the microphone and observe the waveform on the cro as well as speakers so this way ssb works it is uh, efficient as well as the bandwidth is concerned however it is complex as far as implementation is concerned because it contains this filter at the transmitter and it requires a slightly complicated demodulator at the receiver another class of analog modulation is frequency modulation fm in frequency modulation the frequency of the carrier changes instantaneously as per the information signal's amplitude fm is very favorite for the broadcasting nowadays because it is very robust against the noise unlike the amplitude modulation in which the information lies in the amplitude of the carrier and because of that the noise performance of am is not very good whereas fm performs the best in the presence of noise so we'll study what is frequency modulation how is it done and how it can be demodulated for frequency modulation we'll use this trainer it has uh, on the upper left audio generator which can be used as a modulating signal then we have three different kinds of uh, modulators reactance modulator varactor modulator and uh, pll based uh, frequency modulator on the other side there are four different kinds of uh, demodulators quadrature detector detuned resonance detector foster sealy or ratio detector and pll based detector so here let's see what kind of signal that is coming out of audio signal generator so i'm connecting the cro pro to the output so you can see on the scope it's a sine wave
There are controls here to change the frequency as well as amplitude. So as I change the frequency, you can see the frequency is changing. And then as I change the amplitude, the amplitude of the modulating signal also changes. Now, there is a selector, uh, modulator selector switch. It's a push button. We can select any one of the three modulators. So by changing this, pushing this, the modulator changes. So currently, frequency modulator is uh, used here for the modulation and we will observe what kind of signal it is at the output of modulator. I am taking this probe and connected at the modulator output. This is a ground. So I have two probes, one here which is the modulating signal, one here which is the modulated signal, FM signal. Let's see on the scope. So the top is a modulating signal, just a sine wave, and on the bottom is a frequency modulated signal. So if I keep the trigger on channel 2, you can see that the frequency changes. These are the frequency variations. The instantaneous frequency of the carrier doesn't remain same, it changes. It changes as per the modulating signal changes. Right now the trigger is on channel 2, that's why you don't see a channel 1, which is this clearly. But if I keep the trigger on channel 1, you'll see the channel 1 clearly. But just to see the frequency changes of the modulated signal, I'm keeping the trigger on channel 2. So you can see the frequency variations. This is FM. The amplitude of the carrier remains same, but the frequency changes. In AM, we observe that the amplitude changes, whereas the frequency remains same. Here it is different. Frequency changes, amplitude or the envelope remains same. Now let's demodulate this signal. So for the demodulation, this signal is connected to this frequency demodulator. Then there is a low pass filter and the output of the low pass filter. So I'm just making some connections at the output. So right now there are two probes. One probe is connected at the modulated signal Fn and the second probe is connected at output of demodulator and the low pass filter. So this is a demodulated signal. So on the CRO screen what you will see is on the top that is frequency modulated signal the frequency keeps changing and on the bottom what you see is demodulated sine wave, original. I am changing the amplitude of the input signal and you can see the amplitude also changes here. So by changing amplitude all the way at the input, we verify that at the output also amplitude changes. And I am changing the frequency at the input, then here also the frequency changes.
So this is the frequency modulation modulator as well as demodulator. Exactly the same kind of modulation is used for broadcast FM. PM, which is the phase modulation, which is very similar to frequency modulation. In principle, they are very similar. However, for broadcasting, they use FM. Let's understand how AM and FM radio works. AM and FM very widely used for broadcast, commercial broadcast. AM was uh, used since early, you know, 1910, 1920. After the invention of FM around 1940, FM is very uh, popular because uh, it is very robust against the noise. Both AM and FM receivers, they work on the principle of superheterodyne receiver, in which a mixer is used to down convert the received signal into very uh, low frequency, then further passed through IF section, intermediate frequency, further down converted into baseband, demodulated, and reproduced. So the AM and FM radios are based on superheterodyne receiver concept and we'll study typically how FM radio works. So here we are talking about RF transmitter and receiver. We'll understand this AM and FM radio using a trainer kit. The trainer kit is known as AM FM radio receiver. In the kit, upper section, what you see right now, is all AM radio, that is amplitude modulation receiver. There are broadcasting uh, stations that use uh, short wave radios and also medium waves. There is one in Ahmedabad, Akashwani. There are many international radio stations that use short waves in the frequency range of around 1 megahertz. FM is getting popular. What you see here is FM receiver. It starts with an antenna. So this is where we connect antenna. For FM application, Antenna is nothing but a single wire. So this black wire, yeah, this, this black wire that you see, it acts as an antenna. It is not a transmission line, it is just a single standalone wire. And that wire will receive the electromagnetic waves, those are being broadcast in and around Ahmedabad. The electromagnetic waves got transformed into electrical signal through this antenna and it is entering through this path to the receiver. So this is our receiver. It starts with RF amplifier. Typically low noise amplifier. The bandwidth of uh, FM receiver amplifier is 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz because that is the range of the FM broadcast signal. 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. Then comes the super heterodyne concept. We have a mixer. It requires local oscillator. So if you see in this diagram. Input signal is FM, then we use local oscillator. Using local oscillator, we convert the FM signal into intermediate frequency signal. For FM broadcast, the standard is IF equal to 10.7 megahertz. So this is IF amplifier. There are two amplifiers. So signal is now down converted to baseband. 
and then we use FM detector. So what you see here, this circuit is FM detector. The output of the FM detector is fed back to automatic frequency control circuit, AFC, which gives signal back to the mixer. Also here, the FM detector output, this yellow wire, right, is given to AF6 circuit. At the same time, we take the output from this red wire and connect that to through this red wire to audio amplifier. So this is our audio amplifier. It will amplify the demodulator signal and then it will connect it back to speaker. So whatever the input signals received by this antenna must be tuned. So using this uh, tuning coil here which is a dial we just rotate a dial that will basically change the frequency of the mixer here local oscillator the local oscillator is changed as per the dial and accordingly on the basis of super heterodyne concept and the down converting mixer concept we get various stations right now i have tuned this to a particular radio station in and around Ahmedabad. So as soon as I turn the speaker on, we'll receive the signal. As we are working in this lab, slightly interior section, the receive signal strength is not good. And that's why we don't see the clarity in the reproduced signal. So this is how the FM radio works. And similarly, the AM also. It has a RF amplifier. It starts with the RF amplifier, low noise amplifier. Then there is a mixer. I have amplifier 1, I have amplifier 2 and diode detector which is a peak detector and then the output is connected through this audio amplifier to the speaker. So this is how AM as well as FM commercial radio receiver works.